Okay, another question in the room? Uh, no, because the microphone... <laughs> so, so my question is, how do you balance, um, you know, one-way relationship between the open source community and, you know, the, the people who get uh, advantage from it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Could you repeat that? The, the, yeah. the, question? the question. So the question was, how do you balance the sort of one-way relationship between the people who maintain the open source project and the people who gain benefit from it, by which I think you mean, I'm going to interpret the question a little bit, um, but I think by which you mean the fact that 99.9% .9 of the people who use an open source project don't contribute to that open source project. Um, and I guess my, and it's sort of, I guess, a little bit of a flip answer, but you know, you just live with it. Like that is the ratio, right? And I think anytime, like, we talk to people who are going to go do an open source project. And I think sometimes they have this impression that they're going to like every user is going to suddenly start filing high quality bug reports and code with fixes. And you're just like, yeah, that's just not going to happen. And, and, and I think, you know, we, we build open source projects with that in mind. We build open source projects that if you're lucky, 10 out of every hundred users will file an issue and maybe one out of every hundred will actually give you some code and then maybe even less than that is going to stick around for multiple iterations of code and even if you stick around you might leave after six months right and and that's just the reality of open source and i don't think it's a bad thing actually like i've done plenty of drive-by commits and and i think that the communities that I contributed to are probably better for it. I don't necessarily consider myself a member of those communities now because mm -hmm. I did a drive-by commit, but um, I, I think that's okay. Anyone else yeah. any comments on that? Yeah, Good. I mean, I, I, not, not really. I agree with what, you, what he's saying there is that you, there is that reality that not everybody's going to do that. But I mean, I think that's, <laughs> that's true of like the band and, and it comes back to that motivation thing. There's I, I think there's just some p folks who just intrinsically want to like, you know, build things and, and fix things. You know, if it's a drive by commit, Hey, I see a need that's there and it's sort of like, it's an itch and you just have to scratch it. And that's just, that's how you scratch the itch. And that's, that's that, that's that particular personality they have. And I, uh, I agree, you know, not everybody is builders, not everybody's fixers or, or whatever uh, that are out there, but there are certain people, they're just going to naturally gravitate towards those things. And, and then there's going to be a lot of people who just use the thing. And I think, yeah, you know, I agree with that. I think it's just okay to, to accept that. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's falling apart given the distribution of what it is that we have. It's actually growing stronger um, based off on that model. It's sort of interesting is that there's nobody governing open source in the greater sense of anything. You know, there's not like a regulatory commission that's, you know, making sure that open source is okay. It just kind of does it on its own. And, and, it, and it seems like it does its own and we're still creating really cool stuff because of it. So, you know, uh, it seems, I don't, I don't feel like it's that broken. There's little broken pieces, obviously, but uh, the vast majority of it seems like it's in pretty good health. 